Emergency workers at the scene are calling it the worst road traffic collision anyone can remember. With the number killed expected to rise from the seven so far, an investigation is underway. The 34 vehicle pileup happened in wet and foggy conditions around 8.25 last night on the M5 near Taunton. Almost 24 hours after the accident, police are still at the site on the northbound carriageway just north of Junction 25. The motorway remains closed. Andy Davis has this. It is an utterly harrowing scene. In the middle of the picture lies the barely discernible frame of an articulated lorry sunken into the tarmac, its driver's cabin completely obliterated. Above it, strewn across the carriageway, lies another vehicle also completely burnt out and seemingly severed in two by the force of the collision. At the back of this trail of destruction, lies a car whose bonnet has disappeared under the tailgate of another partially incinerated lorry, the last, perhaps, in this series of horrific impacts. A total of 34 vehicles were involved in this pileup. It happened just before half past eight yesterday evening on this, the northbound carriageway of the M5. One driver who witnessed it told reporters all she could hear was the sound of thump, 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 as the vehicles crashed into one another. Sixteen hours on from the incident, the police were still trying to recover bodies from some of the vehicles. Of the more than 40 injured, nine were still being treated near the scene by ambulance crews. This afternoon, the police said they were doing all they could to help the families of those who died. Sadly, I can now confirm that we believe we've had at least seven people die as a result of this incident. We fear that that num number will rise as the day continues and we carry out an extensive search of vehicles and the carriageway at the scene. Of course our thoughts at this time are very much with the family of anybody who's lost their lives and we'll be working very closely in support of those families. This footage was filmed just minutes after the accident from within a car heading slowly south on the other side of the motorway. An Iceland food truck is illuminated amidst the wreckage by the lights of the emergency services. Someone can be seen trying to wrench open a door of one of the cars. The fireball which engulfed many of these vehicles was, according to the police, instantaneous. The rescue operation involved 50 firefighters from across the region. Four of those who died, said the police, had been in one car. We're about five cars back um, as we came to a stop. Uh, the cars were still sort of kind of piling up as we came to a stop and all the brake lights finished. Um, just saw flames coming up out of all the trucks um, and it sort of got bigger and bigger up to about sort of 20, 30 foot high. Specialist teams of accident investigators have been at the scene all day sifting through the extensive wreckage which lies just about half a mile away down this still redundant motorway and their challenge now is to piece together precisely the chain of events which led to this appalling series of collisions. Why it happened is still not clear. The weather conditions were particularly poor at the time. There were fog patches and groundwater affecting this area. It was dark. The police are also looking at whether a fireworks display in a neighbouring rugby club may have caused a distraction but some of those at the event have insisted it ended 10 minutes before this accident. It will be, said the police, a painstaking and complex process to establish what exactly happened here. And Andy Davis is still there at the scene where the work is going on. And is there any more news on the casualties? Well, I spoke to uh, the police within the last hour and they said that the figure of seven dead has not changed, but they did suggest that the tragic recovery exercise is still taking place and they are still trying to recover bodies from uh, the vehicles here. And that gives you just some idea of just how intense that blaze was last night and how difficult a task the emergency services face. So that exercise is ongoing. The forensic investigation will continue through the night and they have a specialist collisions unit who will be going through every single vehicle, trying to pick out every single piece of evidence and what they'll ultimately be uh, hoping to achieve is what happened after the 1991 M4 
crash in which 51 cars collided. And there, the police would eventually reconstruct this model of every single car, the likely trajectory of each single car, what happened from the first point of contact to the last impact. And that happened over 19 seconds. So they'll be working through the night. Then it'll come to the business of vehicle recovery. All 34 vehicles have to be taken off the motorway. Only then will the police hand the motorway back to the highways agency and they will have a considerable task to repair the surface of the road because there was a, a huge amount of fire damage. So it will be quite a lot of, uh, it'll be another, at least another 24 hours uh, before this motorway is reopened. Andy Davis, thank you. Well, joining us now from St Albans is the president of the AA, Edmund King. One of the most shocking things about this is the, the descriptions of the fireball uh, that happened in this uh, pile-up. Do, do you think we need to look at the fuel tanks on goods vehicles? Well, I think we do need to look at the fuel tanks on goods vehicles because only last week there were two other incidents, one on the M25 near the M23 where a lorry hit the barrier, it ruptured the fuel tank, the motorway was closed. Also last week there was one on the M6, a tanker was in a collision and 15 tonnes of some kind of flammable solvent went over the motorway. So there's no doubt when motorways are closed, quite often uh, fuel tanks are ruptured, there are diesel spills, but I wouldn't say that was the cause yesterday because generally diesel isn't as flammable as petrol. Petrol's more likely to explode than diesel. Although diesel, when mixed with other substances or spray, obviously is flammable and does burn. What else do you think needs to be looked at? Well, I think the other thing that does need to be looked at on our motorways, motorways are our safest roads, yet when there is a major pile-up, a multiple collision, one of the factors that's always involved, no matter what the weather, is tailgating. So that's drivers driving too close to the car in front. If you think of a car doing 70 miles an hour, the actual stopping distance is 96 metres. That's equivalent to 24 car lengths. And we all know on, on motorways that many drivers drive too close to the car in front. So I think more active police campaigns, targeting tailgaters, prosecuting dangerous drivers if they are tailgating, would certainly help. And it, it would reduce the number of vehicles involved when there are these thankfully rare multiple collisions on motorways. And, and, and tailgating becomes even more of an issue in bad driving conditions. Well, yes, it does. I, I mean, indeed, last night the roads were extremely wet. There was patchy fog, and that basically means you, you should leave twice as much distance. But people rarely do that. They rarely slow down. Perhaps we need to look at the French speed limits, where in good conditions they have a higher speed limit. When it's raining or snowing or wet, the speed limit drops. And I think that would be a sensible precaution on our motorways. Edmund King, many thanks.